opening statement on the uh, 2019 recruiting class and just what this week uh, for you really accomplished and how you feel about the group. Yeah, uh, signing day yesterday is always a great day for our program. It's the culmination of a lot of these players' uh, hard work, dreams, and goals, and really a starting point to uh, the next phase of their career. Uh, before I get started on that, a couple quick thank yous. Uh, this is a, a campus-wide effort. I mean, all the way from Dr. Robbins, our president, was involved in, in this particular recruiting class, um, to all the people in athletics, academic support services, and then really the, the main people I want to thank is our staff, uh, Sergio Brown and Dave Lawn, in particular. The amount of work that has gone into putting this group together was um, significant. And uh, we addressed uh, a lot of the needs that we want, mostly on the mound. Uh, 15 players that we feel really good about uh, that have a chance to have an immediate impact when you talk about the 2020 season and then really establish themselves over a long period of time here at uh, – Arizona. Um, going through them uh, briefly, uh, each guy, uh, first one in alphabetical order, Will Bartlett, uh, first baseman, catcher, uh, goes to IMG Academy in Florida. Uh, he lives in uh, California, actually. Will has uh, got a chance to be a special hitter here, has really emerged over the last year. Um, you know, good balance of average power, and he also brings a lot of leadership skills to the table, which are very much welcomed within our uh, program. Uh, next one, uh, left-hander Ian Churchill from Santa Barbara City College uh, in California. Uh, had a tremendous summer in the Alaska League this year. Uh, was one of the top prospects in the league, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, tremendous pitch ability. Uh, Coach Lon, I got to tip my hat to him, went up there this summer and got a chance to see Ian and on that long flight home said, this is somebody we need to add, and we're certainly excited about uh, Ian. Next one is Hunter Cope. Uh, six foot nine, right-handed pitcher. We're gonna have to keep Coach Miller away from him because uh, he's athletic too. So probably be a good post player in basketball. But tremendous ability, fastball up to 95 miles an hour. Uh, really good competitor, really good breaking ball, and uh, limitless potential uh, in Hunter. And I think he'll realize a lot of that here at Arizona. Uh, Hunter Cranton, J. Sarah High School in California, also has really come into his own over the last few weeks in regards to his development, um, has really put in some good work and blends uh, another high level arm, fastball up to 93 miles an hour, good breaking ball. And I really believe Hunter uh, Cran, his best days are ahead of him. Uh, staying on the mound, staying in Southern California, Andrew Dahlquist, right-hander, uh, up to 91 miles an hour, really good slider, uh, terrific athlete, another you know projectable guy that you can see um, the best years are uh, in front of Andrew and has performed well all the way through his high school career um, at Redondo Union. Uh, local guy, Jose DiCaccia, another right-handed pitcher. I uh, believe he's one of the best pitchers in the state of Arizona, uh, competing with a couple of the other guys on this list that I'll, I'll mention. But highly, uh, highly competitive uh, guy. Struck out over 100 guys last year in high school in, you know, say 58, 59 innings. So... Legit put away pitch and, and tremendous arm speed. Uh, another local guy, Herman Fajardo from Nogales, uh, helped them uh, win a state championship last year. Terrific slider. Uh, Coach Lon, another guy he was really on me about throughout the recruiting cycle this summer to say that this guy needs to be a wildcat. And it took me about five pitches to figure out that, that Coach Lon was right on that one. So we're happy to have him. You know, when you're adding all this good pitching, uh, the catching position is really important. Uh, we added uh, Caden Hobson uh, from Redlands East Valley High School in, in Redlands, California. Left-handed hitting catcher. Uh, tremendous catch and throw skills, really emerging as a hitter. Uh, very physical looking um, player that when you, you look him, at him behind the plate, you look at that's what a Pac-12 uh, catcher should look like. Blake Klassen. Left-handed hitting outfielder and first baseman from J. Sarah High School, also in Southern California. Uh, looks like uh, what I want an Arizona hitter to look like. Uh, has tremendous bat speed, power, really good plate discipline, and one of the best hitters in one of the best high school leagues in the country right now. So we're really excited about Blake. Uh, big pickup for us uh, this summer, uh, Garrett Irvin, left-handed pitcher from Riverside 
community college. Uh, he was one of the best Division II pitchers in the country. Last year decided to transfer, and when we got wind or word of that, uh, hopped right on it. It was a highly competitive recruiting battle for Garrett, and we're really excited uh, that he chose Arizona. I had the opportunity to see him pitch two weeks ago and uh, walked away as impressed as I, as I could, and, and he will be someone that will figure heavily on our pitching staff in 2020. Uh, Zach Martinez from Mountain Ridge High School up in the Phoenix area. Uh, Zach was, was one of our top targets in this class when we saw him uh, a few years ago, really, uh, up to 92 miles an hour again with the fastball, two-plus pitches. But I think what separates Zach is his competitiveness. He really believes in his ability and throws the ball with great intent. And, uh, you know, just one of those guys that we feel like is going to be really successful. Uh, staying in state for the next couple guys also, Colton McIntosh, versatile infielder, outfielder, utility player uh, from Shadow Mountain High School up in the Phoenix area. Uh, really good athlete, hits from both sides of the plate, can play a lot of positions, um, and somebody that we think is very interesting talent that we're excited to work with. Uh, has a tremendous throwing arm. Some people have talked about him as a pitcher, but our, our primary uh, uh, plan for Colton is as a position player. Chandler Murphy, uh, who I believe was uh, the Arizona State Player of the Year last year uh, from Liberty High School, was one of the first guys that we had committed in this class. Uh, again, high-level performer, uh, plus th three-plus pitches, always puts the ball where he wants it to. Uh, great competitor, just really polished, and, and one of those guys that when they're this close to you and they're of this quality, you want to get them in your program. So we're very excited about Chandler. Uh, next one, Dawson Nets, uh, perfect game All-American, uh, had a tremendous summer, had video game type numbers and during his high school season last year, helping uh, Maranatha High School win a Southern Section Championship. Uh, you know, in my opinion, has a chance to be, you know, one of the best uh, pitchers in the country during his time here and uh, really limitless potential. Again, fastball up to 94 miles an hour, three plus pitches, that elite competitiveness and um, you know a staple you know rotation type guy in my opinion last one is uh, Jacob Shaver uh, who I believe was our first commitment in the class a long time ago now uh, infielder outfielder great athlete I think he scored 24 touchdowns in football um, this year he's a little JJ Taylor comp uh, we're gonna have to keep someone away from him don't don't want that going on but great athlete can play all over the field and uh, somebody that we're really, really excited about. Again, elite uh, competitor and those types of things. I think what stands out about this group is you heard a lot of the measurables about what they're capable of, but that it shows up on the field. And they have a winning type quality to them, and, and they're the type of guys that we want to bring into to the program here. So very excited about it. Um, these guys will be uh, meshing well, I believe, with the, the incoming players we have this year to put us in a good position moving forward. Yeah, there are 10 pitchers. Yep. Um, why, why so many pitchers in this particular time? Well, I, I think if you look across the country uh, at the programs that continually show up in Omaha or at the highest level, you look at a Florida, uh, you look at a Virginia, you look at a Vanderbilt, the separator for those programs is, you know, what stands 60 feet, six inches from home plate. And, you know, each year, I believe we've been able to recruit a higher level pitcher than the previous year. And I think this is a, a big point, of, it was a big point of emphasis for us. Uh, I think how the team meshes looking forward is something that myself and Coach Brown and Coach Lon are always looking at. I think we have a, a really solid group of young position players that will make an impact on this year's team with a few pitchers as well. And then you merge these guys in with them uh, we're just pushing to become more complete, you know, every year that we're here. And I think this pitching group uh, helps us accomplish that. What did you learn in your three, three seasons, I guess, right? Three years in the Pac-12 um, that has kind of shaped your outlook as far as recruiting goes? Well, I think, I think it's as highly competitive conference as there is in college baseball. I think the margin between the second place team and the ninth place team is paper thin. And so... What we would like to be able to do on the pitching side of it 
is always put our team in an advantageous matchup, knowing that the games are going to be close, knowing that the margin between winning and losing is really small. The more innings that you're creating an advantage for your team on the mound, the better chance you give yourself of being on the right side of it. And, you know, winning on a road is tough. And uh, talking to people that I respect all the time, the best way to become a better road team is to pitch better. And uh, that was certainly the goal here. Any updates on current players um, in the as, season? as far as this team? Yeah, uh, we feel great about um, the fall that we've had. We've pushed these guys extremely hard. I mean, August 20th was our first day of school. We got in the weight room August 20th. Uh, we'll finish our fall practice this weekend uh, with our Wild vs. Cats World Series. I think we're a little farther along and knowing a little bit more about our team because we got to play Cal State Fullerton and BYU over the past three weeks and uh, really got a lot of the new players, got their feet wet, uh, have gotten to see some of the returners, you know, some of the strides that they've made in, in their development. I think we're a long ways to go from being a ready-made product, and so we'll look to have a good weekend this weekend, and then we'll have a, a really good opportunity in January when we come back to prepare for the 2019 season, which, which we're really excited about. Last year's class, you had the two guys who ended up being first-round picks, and obviously they didn't come here because they were first-round picks. Is there anyone in this class who could possibly ascend to that level? I don't think there's any question about that. And I, if I, I don't know if I'd put a number on it. I don't think that any of them to date probably have positioned um, themselves the way that, you know, maybe Nolan Gorbin did last year, or Matt Libertor. At this time, the day we signed those guys, we knew we were probably fighting an uphill battle of, of getting them to campus. I think in this particular group, there's certainly some guys that have the ceiling to ascend to that in the spring. I think we'll get out, we'll do a good job of educating them on the college path uh, to professional baseball, and that those conversations will happen in a lot of in-home meetings in December. I certainly think there's plenty of guys that can. I like the dynamic of the families that uh, we recruited in this group, where I believe college is really important to them. and. I can't stress that enough of how much of an impact that makes on the college or the pro decision. I feel good about where we're at in, in terms of, of that part of it with this class, and we'll keep that communication going to get as many of them here as we can. Did you ever not recruit a player because you just you were certain that he was gonna was never gonna come here because he's just too good? Yeah, I I don't know that I'd ever say we would never do it. I think, uh, you know, in last year's class, losing those two guys, we recruited them when they were sophomores. And you could tell they were obviously immensely talented, but I don't think there's a crystal ball that can tell you that one's going to ascend to get $3.5 million when we offered him when he was 83 miles an hour. <laughs> and the other guy, you know, um, pretty special hitter. But um, no, I don't think so. I think we, we keep ourselves in play, and then we get to this next phase where we – <coughs> Excuse me. Try to educate them well, and then give ourselves the best chance to bring them into our program. One of the players that we did not talk about when we um, chatted recently was Dayton Dooney. Yeah. What can you uh, tell us about? Yeah, uh, Dayton's having a really good fall. I, not a surprise to me. Uh, I mean, he was always a high-level performer in high school. Uh, one of the best players in San Diego County, really, for the last three years. Uh, plays an elite high school league and always performed. I think he hit around 500 last year. Uh, I think he made a great jump in his development this summer, uh, playing for the Utah Marshals, you know, played about 65 games at shortstop. And uh, he's done a great job in the two scrimmages of slowing the game down. You know, anytime you have a switch hitting infielder, that's a, a great advantage and value. And he's done a nice job transitioning himself to college baseball. And I think there's four or five guys in that freshman class that that's what we'll look to do with them because, they're, like him, they'll, they'll have a chance to contribute right away. Who are the Off the top of my head, Austin Wells, I think, has a chance to be a, a great player here. Um, was a, a big recruit for us last year. Um, you know, can impact the game in a lot of ways. I uh, caught well against BYU on Saturday, threw th three runners out, I think, so his arm is fully healthy. Um, swung the bat extremely well throughout the fall. 
Uh, Brandon Bossier, uh, can really versatile player, can play all three outfield spots, play first base, uh, has really swung the bat well. I, I don't know what the numbers are. I think Daniel has them, but I want to say he had eight or nine hits over the two fall scrimmages, uh, which was great to see. Um, Ryan Holgate, uh, you know, pretty loud, <laughs> pretty loud couple games as far as uh, I think he had four home runs, had nine or ten RBIs. And, I, and what's impressive about that is he's made some adjustments since he's been here uh, and quickly made adjustments, uh, which is, is good. And there's others. You know, those are probably the three or four that, that stand out. I think Tony Bullard's going to be a good player. I think Bryce Bigel's going to be a good player. On the pitching side, uh, Bryce Collins and George Arias have thrown the ball extremely well. Um, and there's other guys with, uh, you know, upside and potential. And, you know, we'll keep working to get them ready as fast as we can. Is Dooney in the first base mix? And if not, or who, who is in the first base mix? I don't know. A better question is probably who's not uh, at this point in time. I think when you look at that, I, I, Matt Dyer um, has caught extremely well. He has not been able, able to play in the two fall games just because of NCAA transfer rules. And um, But, I mean, he's going to get a lot of time behind the plate. Uh, at the same time, he might also be our best defensive first baseman. Uh, we talked about Austin Wells. I mean, he's going to catch, and he'll probably mix in the first base thing as well. Uh, Dayton, you mentioned, uh, has spent some time over there at first base. Uh, Brandon Bossier has spent some time at first base. Uh, we moved Jacob Blass over there the other day, as, as crazy as that might sound. But, you know, when you have three shortstops, high school shortstops, which, you know, Cameron Cannon was, Jacob Blass was, and Dayton Dooney was, it gives you the luxury and flexibility to do those types of things. So I think you may see several players take that position at some point during the season based on what the rest of the picture looks like. Is, uh, is Matt Frazier, is he playing center field? Yeah, yeah Matt's in center uh, at this point in time. Him and Dante or Dante Williams are kind of battling it out for that spot. Um, and, uh, you know, we're doing some, some things with Matt's swing right now uh, to make some adjustments, uh, you know, both from a vision standpoint, from a swing path standpoint, from the standpoint of getting his lower half involved in his swing a little bit more and help get him to his potential. And we've seen some good things out of that and just got to keep working at it. Correct me if I'm wrong, did you have like, the student manager types like serve as the, co as the captains for the Oh, for the draft? Uh, yeah. Avery Weems and Cameron Haskell are the managers uh, of the two teams. And so they get to decide on playing time lineups and all those types of things. So they get to feel the joy of being a coach for a few days while our staff sits up and watches. Um, we had Jake Johnson, who's a graduate manager, uh, who does a terrific job for our program. Uh, and Cameron LeBlanc, who's a student manager assist as GMs, if you will. And they did a nice job. I think we have a very uh, even and highly competitive series coming up. Any uh, input on how that goes, or restrictions, or you have to pick a certain number of pitchers? Or no, what we do is, uh, I mean, the catching piece, we like the catching to be balanced, if it can be. Because uh, if that's out of whack, then the series is going to go bad. Uh, we give them the pitching uh, protocol, as far as how many pitches guys can throw, what days they can be used. And then they draft accordingly, and I think they both have an even number of pitchers on both sides. Uh, we let the innings kind of play out throughout the weekend. So we're playing a seven inning game tonight. Depending on who's used, not used, we can fluctuate the innings for each day to try to get everybody involved. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's really good. I think it's, a, it's good for our players to see how their peers evaluate them and, uh, and, and where, they, where they're seen amongst themselves. And, it's good team building exercise, good time. We had a highly competitive practice yesterday, basically split into the two teams. So I think there's some good baseball that will be played this weekend. Who was the first pick? Matt Dyer was the first pick in the draft, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, yes. Practice, it's a practice, yeah, type situation. Um, yeah, so he is He's fully good to go now. No more sitting out, which is great. Sitting back. As a as a coach watching them manage, is it goofy kind of going on? Are they t making having fun with it, or are they taking it pretty seriously as managers? 
Well, I, I think it's a little both. I mean, for, for us in this program, competition is the fun part about it. And they want to win. I mean, there's no, no bones about that. Uh, but I think it's good for them to be able to make decisions, those types of things, and uh, have a good time, you know, getting after it. We use our point system, you know, focusing on how we win games. And so I think we're set up for a good, good couple weekends. And, you know, Cameron Haskell and Avery did a nice job putting the teams together. Uh, they're organizing their lineups well. They texted me a couple times last night, what do you think about this? I said, we're out of it. This is all you guys. <laughs> Are they participating also? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They'll both both pitch this weekend. What does the winning team get? Uh, we will have a uh, very nice uh, dinner, uh, and basically an occasional meal, um, you know, for the winning team. Um, and uh, yeah, pays to be a winner. So. Coach just finally put out our uh, 2019 schedule today. 32 home dates playing at Houston at Penn State. Just kind of your thoughts on the competitive schedule for, for us. Yeah, I think we got a great 2019 schedule. Just some initial thoughts. I like opening up at home. We have great fans. I mean, you know, so opening day at, at High Corbett, I think, is something that's really special. And then that second week, we're on the road in two highly competitive environments. We're at Rice, uh, which is a, a traditional power. Um, new coach, Matt Braga, who who's, does a terrific job. Um, so that'll be a great uh, opponent there. And then Houston, the second weekend at University of Houston, I mean, they've quickly become one of the elite programs in the country, in my opinion. Uh, Todd Whitting does a great job there. And so we're going to find out real quick, you know, where we're at and what we need to do uh, moving forward, you know, playing at, at those two environments. Uh, College of Charleston is coming here, which is always a very good RPI team, team that will win a lot of games. Uh, Michigan State in the non-conference Tuesday home game. Xavier, um, non-conference Tuesday home game. So I think there's some new teams that our fans will be attracted to going to Penn State in our bye weekend late in the year. Uh, both Houston and Penn State will return trips to uh, High Corbett in 2020. So that's something to look forward to. And then just playing a lot of good RPI teams, you know, New Mexico State and, and Grand Canyon, they've been one and two in the WAC. Uh, San Diego State on the road uh, typically wins a lot of games. So I think we'll be tested. And uh, I'm excited. We have 32 home games. I believe that's the most home games that we've had since I've been the coach here. And we've, you know, played pretty well at home. And so that's something that we hope to continue to do, you know, in 2019. All good. Thanks, guys. Thanks, coach.